we're good now. All right. Give me like two seconds to pull up the. All right. All right. Moving on to the committee of the whole. All right. So uh, we're going to call that to order. We're going to skip the um, pledge of allegiance, but we do need to do the roll call again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Here. Mrs. Bell. Here. Mr. Jerry. Here. Mrs. Leone. Here. Mrs. Olson. Here. Mr. Rittenhouse. Here. Mr. Scott here. Mr. Sturble. Here. And Mrs. Thompson. Here. All right. Um, procedures for public participation are the same as they were about three minutes ago. Um, so moving on to announcements. Yes, is that right? Yeah. Um, so um, we do not have any agenda edits. Um, there will be an executive session following the meeting to discuss litigation and personnel. Um, and now for the superintendent's report, Ms. Uh, Dr. Cooper. Thank you, Madam President. I have two items this evening. The first is I would like to uh, recognize our senior student board representatives, uh, Chloe Fries and Samantha Sheffo. Uh, for their participation um, on the board. Um, uh, they'll be leaving us as they uh, commence over the, across the stage on June 2nd. Um, and we did want to take some time to recognize them and present a certificate to them. So if I could have uh, Ms. Olofsson uh, come on up here. And the uh, second item I have this evening is just um, recognizing our Teacher Appreciation Week started today, runs through uh, the end of this week. So I want to take this time to publicly thank our professional staff for all that they do for the students and families of our Blazer, commun uh, Blazer learning community. So um, thank you to our teachers. And that, that concludes my report. All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, so moving on to the student government report. Um, first, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be on the board for the past few years. I loved being here, and I also loved going to all of the schools. Um, for the primary center, academically, students are taking their end-of-the-year benchmark tests to track their final progress. And extracurricularly, last Thursday, the families came in for open house. And culturally, also at the primary center, the high school sports captains are helping out with field day, which is coming up this week. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. I really learned a lot, and I'm sure I'm going to use a lot of the um, things that I've learned during my two years here in the future, so thank you. For the middle school, academically, PSSA testing concluded, Keystone testing begins next week, and students are completing their final assessments. Extracurricularly, spring sports are finishing up. Spring concerts will be taking place this week and next week. Several TSA teams are moving to nationals. The eighth grade choir will be attending music in the parks, and grades will be going on their respective school field trips. Culturally, bridge days are happening. May 17th is the rise in fourth grade, and May 25th is the rise in eighth grade. And the eighth grade formal is next Friday on May 19th. Uh, for the AIC, academically, the students are wrapping up the SSAs this week and the past week. For extracurricular, each grade is hosting a kickball tournament to kick off the end of the school year. And culturally, the high school sports captains are helping out as well at their field day, which is coming up this week. 
So as the senior reps are graduating or moving on, uh, I'll be a senior next year, I'm a junior now, so me and Anna Buckwalter will remain here. And we have two new junior reps, one here today, Blake Hat, can you stand up? There he is. And Ellie Wagner, who could not be with us. Um, so, um, is this our last time to see you here until, until um, is it, will it be August that we see you next, or in, in, in September probably? Because um, you have to give a, you, you can't, the, the committee of the whole is early in the month, and so schools won't be open yet. So, yeah, so. Yeah. Sports says September. All right. So have a good summer. Have a good summer. Uh, you know, I already, I already said. I already said good luck to you guys, but you know, have a good summer, and we'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you awesome. guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, a student government report. Do we? Is Lauren here? Hi. Hi. Come on up to the. Come on. Come on up to the podium. The mic is on. Just. It, well, it's on here. Is there a? Is, I think there's a. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Um, good evening, Daniel Booth School Board members. Um, this is below on my agenda is a summary of spring's past and future accomplishments and the activities of student government. We would first like to thank those who have made these events possible. Thank you to our administration at high school and the district levels for being supportive and helpful through the endeavors of this year. Thank the school board for always trying to put the needs of their students first, and we'd like to thank our high school staff for helping us have a safe and enjoyable school year. So in our past, we've done our spirit weeks. We had a very successful winter spirit week, and we are excited to end the school year with our um, spring spirit week. This year we included random fun Fridays, which are random spirit days thrown in at the end of the week to help celebrate our school spirit. So looking at our committee work, this year, we, next year, we're hoping to focus on having more like involvement in our committees. Um, we kind of struggled with that this year, but we're looking for new ways to improve next year. So for elections, our student government elections were held on Tuesday, May 2nd. So our results are in, and our new president is Owen Adamets, our vice president is Cameron Burmester, and our secretary is Danica Leister. So for the elementary reading, the reading day, and the field day in kickball, the student government was also asked to be a part of this, and I just want to say, as someone who was part of it, it was the most fun I've ever had. We would like to thank Mr. Becker and Ms. Hefner um, and building staff, and thank you to Mr. Spores for his assistance in organizing our elementary field um, trips. The high school students greatly enjoyed reading to the elementary students, and we're excited to be a part of the field day and kickball. We also had our um, Polar Plunge, which is called Reason for a Reason last year, and that was really fun. Um, for prom, we want to thank Ms. Jones and our junior class. The juniors and, senior had, juniors and seniors had such a great night. Our blood drive in Health in May was also very successful, and we want to congratulate the band and choir spring concerts. So looking at our spring sports wrap-up, we closed out spring sports season with our um, spring spirit week. Our sports teams played very well, and we wish best of luck to teams or individuals who will be traveling into their postseason. We want to offer a shout out to senior Tucker Hogan um, for becoming the PIAA state champion, state champion in wrestling, and Dean Hauser, who made it into states. We also want to congratulate our boys bowling, who went into state championships and had a birth into nationals. And we are, as a senior, I am very excited for our graduation ceremony on June 2nd. Lastly, we want to thank you for an enjoyable and successful school year, and we hope to make the 2023-2024 school year even more exciting. I would like to thank the Student Government Advisor for mentoring me and supporting me throughout the last two years. It has given me confidence and opportunity to try new things. And on behalf of the entire student body, thank you, Dr. Cooper, for leading the district, and we wish you well on your future endeavors. Thank you, Ms. Massenville.
Okay. Oh, the lucky ones get to go. Bye, Mr. Bailey. Are you, are you, are you, yeah, I figured. Okay. Have a good night. All right. Um, finance. Moving on to finance. Um, is there anything under finance that the board wants to discuss? The only thing I want to point out is that number four, I'm going to have to recuse myself when we do the voting, but everything else, because it's, it's my donation, so, but other than that, we're good. But we want to talk about anything else? The social studies program, we're going to talk about that at the next curriculum instruction, correct? Or we're not? Correct. I'm assuming that's on the agenda for... It's, it's next week, right? Yeah, I thought we had moved that up. Okay. No, I thought you had moved it up to put on the agenda. I have it on the whole. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, because okay. Yeah, right now it's listed as uh, just coming out. It, right. It, yeah, it's yeah. Not okay. it's not, there's no recommendation from the Got it. committee, that's all. And, um, so you got strike time. Uh, pardon me? Are you going to strike 2A then? It's not a voting meeting. This isn't a voting meeting. No, you're fine. Um, this isn't a voting meeting, and that that committee meeting will happen before, before, before that. we okay. vote on That's this. So if there's a reason, if we need to change okay. the, this consent item in any way, we can deal with it then. Mm -hmm. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Okie dokie. Can I, um, any, any public comment on finance? Um, okay, programs. There is one item for uh, disposing of textbooks. Do we, have, do we have anything we want to talk about? Any public comment on programs? Retirements and resignations. There's one item there. Any um, under number four? Any any discussion by the board? Any public comment? Uh, leaves. A little bit more under um, um, four B. And appointments <coughs> as well. Any any comments? Questions? Concerned on any of that? Any public comment? On personnel. Presentations by board members. Mr. Scott. Oh, as far as correspondence? Yep. I have nothing to report. Okay. Um, BCIU, Mr. Jerick. Mr. Jerick? He, he dropped off. He just dropped off. We will come back to BCIU. BCTC. Mrs. Thompson? Hi, we met on April 26th. Uh, we went over the 2023 strategic plan, um, new, sort, new student orientation. Next year was uh, May 3rd through the 4th. Uh, they did a decision day. This is, this is the first one. Just give us a second. Uh, my apologies. No, German? it's okay. Um, I've, I've, I moved it on to Mrs. Thompson for BCTC, but then we'll swing back, we'll circle back around um, to BCIU in just a second, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah, so I saw a couple people from school, like m friends of mine who have kids at that age, make announcements that their kids are going next year, so I know a lot of people made that decision and so on. Okay. Um, so they had their decision day on May 1st at the Miller Center for the Arts to celebrate their students either going to workforce, military, or college. Um, they have a NASA launch update. Um, their students are actually creating handrails for uh, the International Space Station. Cool. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, the student built house is almost finished, and they plan on putting that on the market um, very soon here. Senior recognition is May 30th at the Santander Arena, and they have over 2,000 students projected for next year. The next meeting is May 24th. Awesome. Any questions, comments from the board for Ms. Thompson? Okay, um, coming back to um, BCIU. Mr. Jerick? 
Thanks, Julia. Yeah. BCIU just basically uh, handled housekeeping items. They approved some contracts. Um, they did some personnel items. Uh, again, mostly just in-house stuff, nothing that really affected us directly. Uh, and their next meeting is going to be the 19th of May. Okay. All right, any questions for Mr. Jerick? A lot of end-of-year stuff. Um, under COLA, I think we've heard your report on that 11th meeting, right? A there was a meeting April 11th, and we've heard that already, right? September 12th, so next one. Okay. Um, any other reports? Was there tax board? Did they meet? No. no. Okay. Um, all right, any public comment on any of those meetings? All right, monthly headcount statistics. Do we have any um, comments, questions, concerns from the board for the administration on that? Any public comment? Um, uh, curriculum instruction. Okay. We met um, April 24th, um, and we had talked about the summer academic connections, and at that time, as of the 24th, about 150 students were signed up. April 30th was the cutoff, so there was a possibility that there had been um, a few more than that. Um, the second annual career fair received uh, positive feedback. Um, we talked about the social studies textbook review. Um, it was a broad search that was narrowed down to two sources. Um, grade 8 and U.S. History 1 were the two that were prioritized most. Um, and Shane Cockle spoke from the audience and was concerned about the cost of social studies materials, and we talked through that for a while. Okay. All right, any questions for um, Ms. Albright on that? Any public comment on curriculum instruction? And extracurricular, Ms. Bell. Yes, we met earlier this evening. We talked about we had a strength sports update. We had a um, tennis player compete at districts in a singles match. Um, we have unified track moving forward in regionals, and the winner of that will be forward to states. Baseball um, and boys volleyball are kind of waiting it out right now to see where they move forward. Um, we have three um, track members moving forward in hurdle, hurdle javelin, pole vault, and 100 meter and 200 meter. We have boys bowling moving forward in nationals, and then we have two um, boys wrestlers moving forward in nationals. Um, we had some responses to our surveys for girls across the middle school, um, but we're going to keep that open for another week. And then we're also doing a survey for girls wrestling. Um, that seems to be an up, up and coming item um, and being opened as a PIAA sport. Um, we also talked about the scoreboard at the stadium. It's been having some issues with flickering and it's 12 years old, so we're looking at that. And then we also added um, to, to vote um, cheer uniforms being added to the uniform schedule, that they will be school supplied rather than um, purchased by the cheerleaders and on the four year rotation. Okay, any um, questions from the board from Ms. Bell? Any public comment on extracurricular? Okay, everybody, get comfortable in their seats because now we got facilities and transportation, Mr. Right, Mr. I'll Rittenhouse. Uh, some of this brief. Uh, we also had a meeting today uh, before this one. We talked about uh, past through history eating cabinet in the middle school cafeteria that has is no longer working and needs to be replaced. Uh, we got quotes on those and had one out of the committee uh, to the voting meeting. Uh, lift, uh, lift the equipment. Or the middle school was inspected, found that it was not operable or cannot be operated in its current condition, needs to be uh, repaired. Uh, we have a quote from United Reynolds for that repair. We're also going to move out of committee. <coughs> HVAC compressor, middle school cafeteria. This is a rooftop unit that compressor has failed or is believed to have failed and will need to be replaced. We have a quote from that that we are going to move that out of committee. We're also asking quotes to replace both those 20 year old units um, just to get an idea of what the price is going to be on that. Uh, high school annex gym painting, uh, that's a project that they want to do over the summer.
summer. Uh, we got quotes from on those, we got three quotes for that, and we're gonna move one of those out of committee to have that done over the summer, over I believe it was a two week period, mm -hmm. have that done. High school doors 10 and 15 repairs to both those doors. Uh, we have a quote that is moved out to just have that for those repaired as well over the summer. Then high school art room drain uh, that's been having issues is not draining backs up on into the classroom. Um, we're looking at having the drain replaced, but at this moment we're just going to have it uh, inspected, video inspected, um, to see fully what the issue is. Then we talked about uh, how to apply the donation of Christ transportation uh, to um, schools as a replacement of playground equipment. Uh, like we, we did discuss that for a little while and uh, we were running out of time so then we moved on to custodial RFP um, we're moving a proposal from SSC uh, for a new three year um, commitment with them uh, then we had a brief uh, update on the Eagle Scout project which is progressing uh, nearing completion about 90% done uh, so the pictures that we supplied with they look excellent so thanks again for, for doing that and that's uh, that's all we had time for. And, and I think that um, our decision was that the discussion of authorizing additional money for the um, playground equipment, we were just going to talk about that in the yeah. next meeting. Yeah, right? I, made a I just wanted to yeah. I just wanted to make that clear. Next meeting will be Yep. Okay. Any questions for uh, Mr. Rittenhouse? Any public comment on facilities? Um, finance. Okay, so what what had happened was since the last time we had a meeting, we got new we got new computers, and I cannot get my notes. So I'm really hoping, and Mr. Lella, you can tell us what happened at that meeting, the the, the finance meeting from last week or two weeks ago. Um, I apologize. I can't I can't even get into the agenda to find out what was there. I won't touch that computer. Right. <laughs> We worked on we worked on the, the budget. We worked on the budget workshop. I don't. I'm, I apologize for putting you on the spot. That's, okay. Uh, we worked on the budget workshop. We're also looking at uh, the homestead farmstead. Uh, looking at the numbers there, how it came in from last year right. to this year. Right. Um, we also looked at the. Um, we looked at our food service uh, management reports. And the other, I just remembered the one other really important thing that we, we authorized, like talking to um, a new a new debt service guy. We were looking at uh, possibility of bringing Concord Financial in. Um, it's a it's a new person to look at our debt, uh, may look at uh, the terms and a breakdown of where you can save this money. And what Concord does is. It's, it's a no-service fee, and it works for free, uh, more or less when we consolidate our debt, that's when he makes his money. So what, what, what he's doing is just taking a look at our debt, seeing what the principal is, what our payments are, and what we can do going forward. He'll also help out on our reports mm -hmm. for reporting purposes, you know, with the business section. Uh, <clears throat> and the, the current person we have right now, he works for Raymond James, he's very good. I'm not in a position that I like, switch or look, you know, real fast at something else. But he has recently switched, switched um, companies, companies, right? right. So and we haven't, and we haven't had a debt, consol a debt reconsolidation, <laughs> um, you know, opportunity to lower our interest rate on any of our long-term debt since very, like, right at the beginning of COVID, like maybe 2020. That's true. Okay. And uh, what what he'll do is he'll just look at everything, give us some reports what's going to be paid off, and uh, it's more or less helpful for the business office and they end up get some information together. So we're not doing any change right now. We you know, just want to bring the new set of eyes and take a look at Okay. I just want to thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, Is there anything, anything else? No, that was, that, was, that was it for the finance meeting. Yes. meeting. And in, and in um, the... The, the budget meeting, um, 
we had our discussion of setting up the budget um, for the, the, the recommendation from our finance folks, as always, is an incremental tax increase. Um, the board members who were there felt that, you know, maybe that's not what we're looking for for this year. So that's, that's the hope is that we don't have to go that road. But um, that's, that, was, that was the recommendation from, from the finance folks. I just wanted to point that out. So, again, we'll have the, that, that um, because we voted on it just now, the budget um, will be available for folks to review publicly, and then um, we'll be doing a little bit more um, number crunching with, once we get our final bills in for June, um, we'll have a better idea of what this actual was for last, for this current year that we're in. Um, so um, that gives us a better idea what our fund balance is going to be. Um, questions? I, I didn't know, Ms. Ms. Leone, if you had a question on that. Okay. Um, any questions, comments for Mr. Lelly or me? Obviously, I'm, I really, obviously really know what's going on because I can't pull it up on my computer, but he might be able to find it for you. Um, any public comment on finance? Reggie Markle from Street Bro. And I guess my question is, is looking through the budget from last year and this year's budget, the amount of long-term debt went up $10 million. Can you put on the website exactly what is in that $10 million? And did you go through all the, fina all the finances since taking the new position? Did you dig through? We dug through, and that's, that's why we brought in uh, the new consultants. And he, he brought uh, all the debt service, total amount of debt, and then he broke each individual, uh, the time period, when we had our debt, and what he did, he put together uh, more or less papers for us to review and look at where we're at, what's getting paid off, and then he'll come in, and he'll come to talk to the board, and I'll give a presentation, show the debt so you can see you know, what's on each school, uh, how much, you know, when the debt's going away, and um, he welcomed coming in here and talking to everyone. But it was it was good to get a fresh set of eyes, and for me coming in too, I get to look at the debt and see what we can do, and using him as a resource, uh, maybe we can get rid of it, consolidate, or lower our payments. So okay. it's, 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 it's something we're looking into. Okay. It's, it's, it's a, it's a big part. <clears throat> yes, and if you could get the P&L and all the detail on the website, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, policy, oh, is there anybody else? Um, Paul, what? What? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, regarding the debt service, I mean, we were doing this four years, three years, five years ago. I mean, I think it's wonderful that we're bringing them in on part of the finance committee and we agreed on that. Um, the opportunity to lower our interest rate on the other ones is probably like non-existent. I mean, we had some really phenomenal opportunities to roll some of that debt um, four and five years ago when the interest rates were aggressive. <clears throat> so I think it's great that we have, and I think it's a great choice for, from the committee and from the, um, uh, from the school uh, administration to have some fresh set of eyes come in but the opportunity is going to be probably slim to none on being able to, I, I, I'd like to, you know, to, to be able to save money just because of that, the interest, it's going to be highly dependent upon interest rate at this point, so. Sure, and, and the person that comes in, what you don't know is, he comes in and he looks at all our debt, and the only way he makes money is to save us money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, we're not paying him anything, right. he's helping out with our financials, and he's giving us the data set we can see, okay, this is associated with this school, this is this debt's associated with this school, and it gives a little understanding better. So um, I'm thinking sometime August or September, okay. maybe bring them in, um, break down everything at the end of the year. Right. Sounds good. I did have one other question yeah, you bet. Um, for Gretchen. What schedule were you looking at? There was a $10 million increase. It's I just the regular budget. I did a comparison over the last four years. 
and yeah, the amount of the long-term bond by not ten million dollars from last year's budget to the 2022-2023 long-term bond. Long bond. Long bond. bond. I I yeah. Like the yeah. Thank and you. I'd like it on the front and not just in the comment section. <clears throat> Yeah, I wrote down the <coughs> what she had, what she had asked about. Yeah, I, wrote it, I wrote it down yeah, so yeah, that we yeah. can. Thank you. So. Um, anything else? Policy. So we had a policy meeting tonight uh, at five thirty. Uh, we discussed four policies uh, regarding Act Fifty Five. Um, without going into all the details, but uh, next meeting will be June fifth. Okay. And um, there's stuff on the agenda there that's going to that's on second reading, so they'll be voted on next meeting. Yes. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions for Mr. Scott on policy? Any public comment on policy? Uh, technology. Mr. Schrobel. Yeah, that's a good one. I have the same technology issue you have. But I can't get to my notes. <laughs> However, I do know there was equipment we had. I know you wrote some notes. Equipment replacement, um, and I have that report. Um, I just can't access it from here right now. Um, um, and so there was a fair amount of equipment being replaced. However, it was all within inside the budget because we kind of balanced them out over the four mm -hmm. years. Um, the, um, he talked about the R, uh, technology and the services with the RFPs. And then um, the biggest one was the website communi uh, community engagement platform and how well it's going and where it's, where it's heading. And I believe we were in the final stage. I want, I want to say June to be able to finish it, but I don't want to give wrong information. So. Yeah. Um, but all the um, people that were um, involved being able to add things and starting to move things over and eliminate pages to make it a lot easier for everybody on their websites. Right. Okay. Um, any questions for Mr. Schrobel from the board? Any public comment on technology? Old business is the uh, meeting minutes. Any comments, questions, concerns from the board on that? Any public comment? New business. I don't think I have anything. Yep, none. Um, any presentations by the public on issues? I'm seeing none. No, I'm stop it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. talk once again about the uh, TIF agreement. Um, I brought some more information where how many township can clearly cover the cost. Uh, they collect $140 a quarter per unit. You times that by four, that's $560 per unit. 329 residents, that's $185,000. Uh, of extra income they'll be getting. Um, their assessment, you know, their tax is 2.65 mills for just the assessment um, for the real estate. Uh, at $300,000 a unit, you're looking at around $250,000 uh, of extra income. So you're, they're looking at gaining between $400,000 and $450,000 a year just on that. Uh, just on the, uh, that one development. I, I sent an email asking if there was any new updates on the numbers. I didn't see. I sent you something at the after the last yeah, meeting, but before I the it. last meeting, but I I might have missed it because I was um, okay. I was it, gone. Has so. there been any new meetings or new numbers on nope. the, the cost? Nope. I also sent uh, information for the Pennsylvania American Water Supply Company. Mm -hmm. uh, I have their phone number here if someone should reach out and call them because they actually paid for the installation, uh, which was part of your TIF guarantee that was called. But uh, they actually paid for it. So that was close to a million dollars on the water end. So really it should be just the sewer that, that the school district, if you choose to do, do it. Um, I also printed out there, it's a pretty neat picture of a dollar bill. So when Avenue Township residents click on it, 
they see this tiny little sliver that they have to pay in taxes to the township. And this giant section here is what the rest goes to the school district. Mm -hmm. So it's showing, you know what, we're fiscally responsible in keeping this number down. Danny Boone School District is not, but then they're asking you to pay for their sewer line, where they could easily increase even a quarter mil would easily cover it, this, this project, along with the uh, $200,000 they're gonna collect in extra sewer, and the other 200 to $250,000 in real estate assessment. Not including also the money they're gonna be getting from the Pennsylvania American Water Company. So, I really would like you guys if you can, let me know when the next updated numbers are. Okay. Is that a public meeting, TIF meeting? Like, I mean, respectfully, could Shane go to a, a TIF meeting next time? Any results from that TIF meeting that um, Ms. Thompson and myself reports out will be reported out to the Committee of the Whole once we get, um, once there's a, a meeting that happens again, we've not been contacted. And we would include the uh, gentleman from uh, that we've been working with throughout the process from that, the county. Shane, thanks. You're welcome. No, Thank you. Like, Thank seriously, you. I, I want to just say for the record, at least me, I, I'm definitely not leaning towards this right now. So please understand that. I think I don't know if I can't speak for anyone else, but we really appreciate what you've done. Thank you've done a lot of legwork. We talked a couple times yeah. on the phone. Um, I think he regrets when I call him. So like, <laughs> <laughs> lasts a long time. Anyone else? <clears throat> Valerie, Document Amity. No. Not that mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I was actually just bringing up an inquiry that has come up quite a few times when I've gone door to door, um, but we are a district that prides ourselves on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so my question is, is and this is comparing other school districts to ours, why is there a, an annual fee for activities when we have a lot of federal funding coming our way and these activities are not covered? Because that just tells the students who aren't necessarily financially capable of paying these fees that they can't be a part of these programs. And so that's a big issue. Like there's a, I know the fee seems nominal to some, but as someone from a, a very poor background myself, I would not have been able to afford to be, be a part of the music program or the athletics program if I have to pay a fee for it. So I want to bring that up as something that I do believe the school needs to look into um, let me just let me let me just say something i i don't want to take away from the fact that you brought it up however the the meeting that i don't have my notes for <laughs> mr cockle actually got up and said exactly the same thing and oh. and <laughs> and uh no you know i'm not you know it's not a contest um and uh but um at the time i said you know that you know that was something I think it's worth looking into, especially since we've had such a decline in, I mean, we just had, we just had our, um, our sports, our, our athletic director come here and say in the last meeting that, you know, we are having, we aren't having the kind of numbers in our sports programs as we've had pre-COVID, um, and we aren't having as many kids doing multiple sports in a year. So, I mean, it, we are looking at it. Yeah. So, but we haven't we haven't had the like, how much money does it bring in? How you know can we afford it? Kind of conversation yet. It is, but it just happened like a month ago that he that he mentioned it. Yeah. Student one free and reduced. Yeah. Yes. They all, they all yeah. Do. Student one free and reduced lunch do do get yeah, that pumped. There are students but I but I get it. students that don't pay it. But I, but yeah. I but I get it that you know, you know, ability to pay yeah, like and, was, and, and be involved. Much. My parents made too much to get a reduced 
Right. I still had no money. I understand. I understand. So there's that whole gap, which you can say that there's subsidies, yeah. there's whatever, but there's still a gap of kids. Yep. And so we need to be a part. And so one of the big things that I have brought to Cooper, Dr. Cooper and yourself and everybody else, is, is activities is what unifies the student body. I cannot stress that enough, mm -hmm. that these activities unify the body. So when there's a fee, something you have to pay, that in itself divides students and is a conversation that most kids are not comfortable having saying, oh, I can't afford it. Do you're right. awesome in basketball. Do you're awesome in football. And they might just make up an excuse why they're not playing. I understand That's that. correct. Yeah. And so, and another thing is with pre-COVID, we also weren't doing, that I can remember, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, before COVID, there wasn't this cardiovascular whole like EKG check before you'd be getting on the field. Did you guys know that? I do know what's happening. I don't know if it, so, I don't know if it predated that. So it, it was not happening before COVID. And so now it's this whole thing that the athletics director has to approve for these kids to even participate. Okay. So, that's my time. Isn't that? Thank you. May I have to I'm, not, I'm not yes. No. yes, you do. If, if, you, had, if you had COVID, oh, you have to get an EKG <clears throat> because that causes cardiovascular <clears throat> problems. And is, you have to sign up on your waiver. checklist, Valerie? Is it's it? not a checklist. It is, you, I had to take my daughter to the doctor, fill out this form, and because she had COVID January, in order for her to participate in spring sports, the doctor had to prove that because her fever wasn't more than three days for her to even participate in the sport. Oh. So that's another issue. That's okay. another thing we're, we're dealing with, too. I don't right. think the director brought that up. No. Thank you. Sorry, they were speaking. No, oh, I understand. <laughs> I gave you more time today. Any, anyone else? I better have this work. Tell me showed up tonight, all right? Because yeah, I heard last reading. I, I you mean your reading. other half, Valerie? <laughs> better. Uh, oh, no, not better. I'm sorry. Anyone sorry. else? Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Oh, then come on. We had meetings scheduled and canceled one hour later. We have repeatedly attempted to contact Brett Cooper for weeks prior to getting any response. The response we received approximately two months after the incident and stated that he felt threatened by the tone of my email and our repeated attempts to speak with him. My son's property has been withheld from us for six months. We went to recover the property. Brett Cooper emailed every student's parents a grossly inaccurate synopsis of what took place when we recovered my son's property. Um, a portion of that said, a member of the community attempted to gain access to the building through misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. The only misrepresentation that occurred was your email, sir, mm -hmm. attempting to portray me as a threat to those who don't know me. I am here to show you that I am not a threat to anybody's safety. I have never threatened anyone or conducted myself in any threatening manner at any point. If I had done so or acted in a threatening manner, I am 100% positive that Chief Jeff Smith would have taken action and placed me under arrest. His inactions to do so lead me to believe that he too does not consider me a threat to anybody's safety. We are aware of meetings taking place among school officials where my reputation is being defamed while falsehoods and innuendos are spread. In your attempt to remove me from school grounds and activities shows you have no consideration to my other son who attends the middle school. I have missed lacrosse games of his due to the location. My 13-year-old son understands all too well your callousness, sir. If there are no threats made and no evidence exists of any threats or threatening behavior, 
there can only be one logical solution as to your behavior. You feel threatened by my family's questions and apparently my mere presence. You could have reached out and engaged in a conversation in an effort to see what failures occurred throughout this situation, if any at all. You did it. My question to you, Mr. Cooper, is why have you chosen to take this path in addressing this tragic matter? And I'd like to thank everybody that has showed up and supported us this whole time. And I hope everybody sees through the lives. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. First, I want to say, we all have the freedom of speech, and I'm going to say, in my opinion, Cooper, I am counting out the days until you are gone. What that man said, and what you have done for this district was nothing but good. Not good. Um, my opinion, you've done nothing great. You have thrown your finger in my face, screamed at me to the point where I thought you were going to hit me, okay? Every board member that was here that night, I hope you remember that. Um, the only great thing is we will continue to pay your health benefits because you are not fulfilling your contract and retiring early for some reason. Anyway, moving on, Julia. I do hope and pray that you lose that seat. Um, our students and taxpayers are not the first for you. I've witnessed that. I stood here since I'm thankful transportation brought me into this meeting a year ago. I sat here, listened to your lies over and over again. Um, you have really disgusted me as a president. You sit there and you sat there, you sat there and promised after the RFP was closed, bids were in. First of all, contract, you look at it, it's all wrong but nobody cares about that because it was a backdoor deal. Anyway, um, and you said many, this whole room was filled with concerns and questions, and what did you say? I'd rather go with the unknown. That was the unknown for our children in transportation. Rather go with the unknown, and you did. And then it came to landscaping, cutting grass, and you said, let's not fix what's broken. So it shows what you were clearly worried about. Um, those pictures I showed you, those are diesel fuel. On every, if you, when you leave here, if you go out in the parking lot and look at every bus, that's diesel. Whoever's fueling those buses, we're paying that diesel fuel, every taxpayer. They are not watching, so that fuel is dripping out. It's disgusting. Those buses are not clean. The other picture is, is of um, the lot where they, they fuel the buses. You can see the spillage, okay? Over the winter, kids are getting sick over and over again. I went to both. Well, my kids are in sports. There was a mop and bucket outside. So if a kid throws up, do you know what was happening? They were taking that mop and bucket and wiping up that vomit and sticking it back in the bucket to wipe it again with the next bus. This is going with the unknown. Thank you, Julia. Um, I was so disappointed Friday at the basketball game as I've been mentioning about May is mental health awareness. I asked you about it to make it aware in the school. You did not show up at, at that game. There was many good points brought up. I really don't believe you don't care because you have not brought that up, answered my questions, you were not there. 
but let's put $1,000 into the library and hope your mistakes are forgotten about. My time's up. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Gretchen Markle, Pearl Street, Birdsboro. I would like to bring to the community's attention that we are dealing with a lean duck school board because Dr. Cooper, the superintendent, refuses to do his job. I've heard complaints from board members that they can't get anything done because you refuse to do your job. Mr. Flowers conveniently sends your district wide emails and phone blasts. What other parts of uh, your job does he do for you? Yes. How about getting a doctor for our district so our children can get treated by the nurse to get Tylenol when they have a headache or medicine for an upset belly? How about being uh, approachable and treating the teachers and staff with respect? Ask the TSA students whose parents pay good money for their children with their projects to be transported in a coach bus but because you could not be bothered to do your job, the students had to take two regular school buses to the event. You won't even acknowledge and answer questions from board members. Let me remind you that, our, that your salary comes from our hard-earned tax dollars and from seniors that can barely make ends meet. Since I attend the bi-weekly meetings, I can attest that you've been checked out since January. The disinterested look on your face with your eyes rolled in the back of your head and your total disrespect for your position speaks volumes of the content of your character. A couple months back, a parent questioned you uh, why you were retiring. After the meeting, I saw the insane look of rage on your face when you ran to scream at her. I recorded your temper tantrum, screaming that it was none of her business asking why you're of your sudden retirement. Maybe she was over the target, I don't know. Um, you broke your contract, and, and like Melissa said, you expect the taxpayers of this community to put the bill for your benefits until you turn 65. Yep. I have spoken to many voters in Region 3 over the past several weeks. Let me tell you, people are not happy about this at all. Yes. If you cannot perform your job duties, then maybe you should leave before June 30th. Otherwise, I say on behalf of the stakeholders of this school district, do your job, and you owe the young family one hell of an apology. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. We have a meeting again next week. So um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I get a second. second. I'll make it. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.